hello. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates. University students in Nigeria will stay at home for a further two months as their lecturers have voted to extend their warning strike. What hope is there of salvaging Nigeria's tertiary education sector? Also on the breakfast, Nigeria has been plunged into darkness for the second time in 2022 following the total collapse of the national greed. What is happening to the nation's power sector? And we have incisive analysis of the headlines in today's national dailies. It's the breakfast welcome right here. It's another beautiful Tuesday and it feels really great as always to be back on your screen. We're just going to be having a great time, having amazing conversations uh, as we proceed in the course of the show. I am Messi Bopo. And I'm Kofi Bertels. It's another day, another time to discuss very important issues of national concern. And Mercy, I um, hope you had yourself a great birthday yesterday. Yes, of course I did. All right. Thank you to everyone that reached the, the, out. The office has been um, filled with so much cake and uh, finger food <laughs> that we have, uh, we can afford to have. All right. Uh, it's, it's a great day, of course, um, issues to talk about. We're looking at the past sector, education sector ahead. We have um, the ASU chairman of uh, in the University of Lagos, uh, Mr. Ashiru. He'll be here uh, on the program. Very interesting conversation ahead. So you should not uh, change the channel. But let's start with a look at the stories that have been trending. And Mercy, of course, um, the first one yesterday, we, we heard about uh, certain Abba Kerry, um, who was said to have um, had some money, good amount of money as a public servant, um, about 1.4 billion naira passing through his account. And if you check um, that 1.4 billion naira, um, th that, is, that is quite a huge amount of money. We also heard that uh, his second in command, his deputy at the IRT, Intelligence Response Team, had about uh, 2 point something billion naira also passing through his account. So all that amounted to over 4 billion naira for both of them. And one, one began to wonder why, of course, you had um, a, a, a serving then serving uh, um, public servant police officer, you know, controlling such amounts of money. But the drama was not just about the amount of money that the NDLEA uh, said that Abakari had, um, had, had gone through his hands or through his account. The wife, the wife of the embattled uh, police officer, um, as well, um, Super Cup, uh, Ramatu Abakari, um, slumped and collapsed at the lobby of the Federal High Court in Abuja uh, yesterday. It's, it's sad because, you know, we don't want to hear anyone going through uh, a, a dangerous situation, a life-threatening situation at all. Um, Kiari and his co-defendants were in court yesterday uh, for the hearing of their bail application before the trial judge, Milord, the Honorable Justice Emeka Nwite. Um, however, the incident of Mrs. Um, uh, Kiari or Mr. Kiari's wife's collapse after uh, it occurred, after the judge had adjourned the suit till March 28. He made the judge adjourn the suit to March 28, and he hit that gavel. <laughs> of course, the woman collapsed. And the videos and pictures of her, you can see on your screen, being rushed out of um, the Federal High Court chambers. You know, um, I, I hope she's safe, and um, I hope she's well. Well, as much as uh, it's important to pay attention to this concern, because if you look at the uh, thoughts that's been put out right there, the reaction is that this is also another gimmick. You know, people feel like we have a pattern where people have to always, it's usually at the courts where they collapse. You have a smile on your <laughs> you, face. You're laughing, you're laughing. No, no, no. I mean, it, it's a serious issue. So it, it's possible that, you know, she fainted. And that's because with all of that that you could hear, I mean, listening to, um, uh, you know, it, it's, it's a hearing, that's number one. It could be so much for her, you know, to handle at a time, and of course it can happen. But we can't actually categorically tell, first of all, we we're not even there. Secondly, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we're not medical practice. You can't even tell what it is. So, so but the, but the two reason more why weeks, people... Two more weeks in detention, of course. Yes, two more weeks in detention. Well, now, well, the reason her, why, if you look at the conversation in different spaces, if you look, the, you look at the conversation the Nigerians are having, 
it's because it seems that we, we always have a pattern where it, there seems to be a pattern where you have those who have been um, or those who are suspect or probably uh, they're facing trial or what mm -hmm. have you would always want to faint and so everyone is now asking I'm sure that's not the original yeah. script you know yeah. how Nigerians can be <laughs> <laughs> the script is that I'm, I'm telling you they, they say this is another Nollywood been. yeah that's what they're yes, saying yes, no no yes, that's yes, the, that's yes, it yes. so you could see that no one is empathizing no one's saying oh my god it could mm. have been so much for her to handle mm. uh, it could have been a lot of emotions going there I mean your husband and some people are saying oh you, you, you were not thinking about it when you know the monies were flowing you know how we already put the judgment already mm. across, not necessarily. Uh, so, so it's a lot to you know deal with right now. But like you have raised, we're hoping that she's okay, whatever the case is, and right. we're also hoping that it's not also another drama. Well, as, well talking uh, about Nigerians talking about dramas and talking about uh, it not being another case. So let's let's just take a, a a trip down memory lane. On July 20, 2020, if you remember, uh, Prof say. Uh, Keme Brady Kumar Ponde, the then acting managing director of the NDDC, demonstrated. I was watching. We, we're I all was, watching. I was watching. Someone just came and tapped me. Boy, 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 go, 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 TV, go, TV. No, me, you I know, was watching. I had to go and check. <laughs> you he, he demonstrated with marginal success uh, the art of fainting, you know, in degrees during a legislative probe into the management of funds of the NDDC. Now, also, if you remember, when the former PDP chairman, Belo Aliru, was accused of pocketing a two billion naira from the Dasuki Lages, remember Dasuki Kate, or Dasuki Moni, as they say, he turned up in court in a wheelchair, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, so did former um, spokesman of the PDP, uh, the great chief Olisa Metu, um, when he was accused of cornering 400 million naira uh, from the same Dasuki Lages. He also turned up in a wheelchair. He would later upgrade to turning up in court or to court in a, in a stretcher, you know, how to stretch him to court. Um, of course, we can't forget Senator Dino Milai, you know, now, you know, he's, uh, he's everywhere, you know, he's boisterous and, you know, he's singing at Jaku and all that. But if you remember, um, Dino Milai also turned up to court in, in a stretcher, if I'm not mistaken, either it was a stretcher or was um, crutches, I need to check. Um, also, former presidential advisor Kingsley Kuku uh, pulled a similar stunt. Then we also remember uh, former Adamawa State Governor uh, Bala Ingilari, who um, turned up to court in, 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 in a wheelchair. And former aviation minister as well, Femi Fani Kayode, you know, people have forgotten, but Fani Kayode had his own stunt as well that uh, he pulled in court. Um, Fayoshe, I Fayoshe, if you remember, he turned up to court in a wheelchair and a neck brace. Do you remember that neck brace that he, I think it was a protest or something. And people began to ask, what's a neck brace for? I mean, if your your neck is broken, you should not be able to walk, <laughs> you know. Uh, but Fayoshe was able to do a protest with that neck brace and then turned up to court the next time in a wheelchair and a neck brace. So, but some, you know, some of the, 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 list, the list goes on and on. No, no, no. So it brings us back to the fact that I, I looked at the comments. I looked at how Nigerians have reacted to it and the comment that people are saying. No one is even empathic about it. And everyone seems to be like, oh, this is not the actual script. There's supposed to be another script. But um, aside that uh, conversation that's actually going on, mm. uh, don't we think that it's important that we maybe we begin to have uh, the medical team on standby in our courts right now? To ensure that we... Are we sure um, we don't even have them? <laughs> we, we Are we sure we don't have them? No, be, because know. in I'm cases sure like that, to yeah. revive, uh, resuscitate, and what have mm, you, mm, mm. Uh, these persons, maybe chest freezers, yeah. just bring them I, back. If it doesn't life. exist, they should be. There they should, should be, should be because it, it feels like it's becoming, yeah. you know, a pattern. Yeah. But I really do not, uh, that did not disrupt the hearing. Uh, however, that was not the report. I'm not sure that disrupted the hearing. I'm sure the hearing would have been... Oh, yes, definitely. Yeah. definitely it did, it because, didn't disrupt the hearing. Yes, it was just as the, the trial judge announced the adjournment, um, uh, for a further two weeks and hit the governor. So, yeah. so it's possible that the, that could be, you know, so much for her to grapple Absolutely. with. Absolutely, that's that's and, what uh, it's about to come to. That you know, you know, whilst the drama of the whole, you know, thing and people not not believing that um, it's real, even with Professor Ponde's situation, you never can tell. Yeah. I saw one that happened in the United States of America where they uh, sentenced a lady. I think they found her guilty, and she had a she slumped right there. They had to resuscitate her. So we never can tell. All we can hope is for the safety of these people. Yes. All right. Um, another one making the rounds. Uh, 
you know, this one is is is, is an exclusive, so called exclusive report that I saw first yesterday. It was first announced, I think, by the Daily Trust newspaper, and uh, uh, it, they said that Vice President Yemi Oshibajo um, has informed President Mohamed Buhari about his presidential ambition. Um, the man hasn't said anything to me, neither has he said to you or to the public, but. This paper was the first to report yesterday. Exclusively, they said that their sources tell them that the vice president has informed President Buhari about his presidential ambition. And um, this continues um, the new culture in Nigeria's political space of um, informing the president if he wants to be president. Um, I do not know if it happens in other climes where, you know, if you want to be president, you have to go see um, Joe Biden and say, Joe Biden, I want to be president. I don't know. But um, this, in this 2023 election, we've seen um, members of the All Progressives Congress flock to Asa Rock Villa to tell Mr. President, I want to succeed you. Um, so that, that's an exclusive one. Then from the Daily Trust, they said they have credible sources uh, that said this. Of course, you look at the administration of President Muhammad Buhari, a Vice President Emir Shebaj has been a, a part of that. He's Vice President. And the question that some people have been asking is, um, with the successes, with the failures, rather, of the administration, they have recorded successes and failures according to the comments out there. Uh, but with the failures of the administration, can he, um, um, can he detach himself from the performance of this administration? Don't forget... Um, yesterday, we also had one trending story where the Redeemed Christian Church of God uh, released a memo uh, informing that it had created the Department of Politics and Governance. And that memo was leaked to the public and it sent tongues around the nation wagging. Oh, this is uh, a man to campaign for Sheba Joe. The church now had to release a press statement saying they wanted to embark on voter, voter education. You know, can you take that to the bank? Well, your guess is as good as mine. But this is a situation as we speak. And also, another angle to this uh, trending story is the fact that the political, so called political benefactor or leader or ally of Professor Yemi Oshibajo, who is credited for Professor Yemi Oshibajo's rise to become Nigeria's vice president, he's credited for that, is also going to be Nigeria's next president. I'm talking about BAT, Bola Ahmed Tinubu. So is this turning, will this turn uh, um, the political allies into political adversaries? Will this turn the political allies into political adversaries? Well, um, time will tell. But it, it, it'll be a very, very interesting one for the APC ahead of the 2023 general elections. Very interesting, like you have mentioned. But first of all, uh, we also have issues, situation. I mean, if you also talk about the Lagos, former Lagos state governor, Bola Timonbu, he's not uh, declared to Nigerians. He's not told Nigerians that he intends to run. He says he has not told Nigerians. That's yes. what he said. Yes. And then well, that he he's told said Mr. That President. He, he, well, he's told Mr. President. But he's meeting with people all over like, the place. Are they not and Nigerians? And we can actually see that very clearly. <laughs> Are they not Nigerians? And, and you, know, you know how it is that uh, people will constantly say, oh, people, Nigerians are asking me. The people are asking that I run. So it's, it's, it's like you're being coerced. Okay. You're being forced. It's not like you want to do that. But looking at it, everyone has a right to express uh, you know, to vie for any office as long as you're not a criminal and you meet, you know, the constitutional requirement. And so it's within his poor view. He's acting within his right. But like you have mentioned, Aisha, Aisha it criminals, be, Aisha criminals or former criminals have. Oh, uh, but so that's another, that's another thing entirely because <laughs> yeah. we live in a climate where uh, you know there. it's almost difficult asking, to have the law saying. implemented to the latter. Mm -hmm. And so it's another conversation. But however, within the ambience of the law, and if you follow the constitution, he has a right to, even though usually. It's always this. I don't know if to call it a pretense or uh, the guys. People come under the guys that oh, Nigerians are saying come run. People are asking on you to run, and so he feels like okay, finally I'm being pressured. Why don't I run for president and why don't I become the governor? But you have raised some valid uh, question. Mm. It's going to be a serious tussle. Now, if he's made his declaration, let's not also forget that words on the streets would also say that uh, the president has his candidates, and one of them they had mentioned is the vice president. And you want to look well, at it logically. Yeah you begin to say what's really going on. He's of the APC. And of course, if, if you were talking about the issue of zoning, you look at the Southwest and what have you, and one would say, okay, there might just be continuity, same political party, but that's within the party. So uh, I think that the APC has a lot to grapple with. Uh, you also have some other persons um, in the same party where you're hearing that they have uh, intention of becoming president, okay. even though they have not categorically mm -hmm. mentioned. Mm -hmm. One of 
of them is wrote, uh, wrote to me, uh, Meche. Uh, you also have... Has, like, he, has he informed you? He hasn't. I'm just okay. telling you that but there, there are, are reports. The yes, there are yes, reports. Yes, yes, I'm yes, not indeed. saying he said that. And no I mean, one has I mean he's, 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 he's qualified a, to be uh, to be president of Nigeria. So, so you, you he's, have... He's from you, the south. You have people... He's also from the southeast or, you know, south-south. So my point is, you have a lot of persons, you know, in the APC... Uh, or those who might be aligning with President Muhammad Buhari, Godwin Emefili, you, you have the likes, even though he's saying, oh, some people are saying he's not really categorically come out to say that. So there's a lot of confusion uh, going on. But if that's going to be the case, then if that's what it is, he, it has to be that the party would have to give him the permit. Yeah. And, but, but uh, you, know, you know, we cannot divorce this, of course, also we must mention the whole, uh, it's the turn of the Southeast crowd, you know, is a turn of the southeast crowd. Um, look at all these names who've been mentioned. Um, um, some of them are not from the southeast. So this is a very important, you know, point to raise. It remains to be seen how this will go in terms of the geopolitics of Nigeria. Next one, um, Alan Oyema is the chairman of Air Peace, and of course um, he's been in the news this time, not lifting Nigerians from South Africa or Ukraine. I mean, or waving the Nigerian flag, the man seems to have a soft spot for Nigeria. And I think everyone should be like him, you know. Um, he has said that, yesterday he said that um, if Kerry is not taken, in the next three days, today now will make it two days, Nigerian airlines will have to pack up. Will have to pack up. Why? Because of the scarcity of this thing called Jet A1 or aviation fuel. And the high price of Jet A1 called aviation fuel. In fact, the high price is not the main issue because they just buy it and then deflect the price to the customers. But they can't even find it. Now, he's asking the federal government, and he said it's so desperate. It's a desperate situation. And he's asking the federal government to give licenses, issue, issue fuel importation licenses to the airlines so that they can import fuel into the country to save themselves, to help themselves. So if carriers are taking lights of Airpeace, Max Air, Dana Air, Arik Air, Ibom Air, and all the airs you have in this country will be grounded. Now think about that for a second and the implications for the Nigerian economy. You know how many Nigerians rely on some of these airlines to travel within Africa and outside Africa. And you know, we rely on them to travel within the country. You know? So, so this, this is a dire situation for the nation. Of course, the president isn't on ground. Um, we have, uh, you know, the nation in darkness, literally and figuratively, the president isn't on ground. The airlines are shutting down. The president isn't on ground. We have the unrest lectures striking. The president isn't on ground. We have complaints of insecurity. You know, 18 soldiers and six policemen killed in KB State. The president isn't on ground. So with all these people asking, where is Mr. President? Why isn't he here? For a nation as big as Nigeria, Africa's largest economy, the most populous black nation on earth, to have his aviation sector grind to a halt. Um, they're asking, will this current administration leave Nigeria um, like this? You know, this is a big question. So we're hoping <laughs> and we're watching to see if uh, we can't fly again in the next two days. Well, um, it, it's really sad. Uh, let's see how all of this goes. But um, looking at it on this other angle, let's not forget that we live in a capitalist system. And if we live in a capitalist system, usually profit is of importance. Nobody looks the other way. And some people have never supported the idea of capitalism because capitalism does not have a human face. It's inhuman and it thinks about itself. And so um, not to say that, yes, the uh, cost of jet A1 is not high. It's on the high. We constantly understand. I mean, the fact that, you know, the Nigerian government has said uh, what is actually happening because the world is a global village. You can't take that out. So the current crisis or conflict, you want to call it, uh, between Russia and Ukraine is affecting the entire globe somehow. However, we want to look at it, even though we are saying, how did we get ourselves to this point? Let's even imagine that we had the capacity to refine our product. We will probably be speaking all of this, you know, grammar and be in this situation. Not necessarily saying that this product would be at so, um, would be um, very free. free or would be free or even like they cheap. Say, even in free town nothing is <laughs> nothing free. is free but i mean the <laughs> availability of the product because you remember this period where lagos lagos was lagos is always the epicenter of almost everything i mean the heat of fuel scarcity people have money to buy the petrol 
poor, they can't buy. That's the worst thing that can happen. The fact that you have money, you can buy, you have the power to purchase because that's what demand is about. And then you can't even buy. It. It's really sad. So, but we know that nothing is really scarce in its real sense. I mean, there's nothing that's scarce. Scarcity is man-made. And that's what happens. And this happens. So it's just, just the politics that happen. And I'm thinking that, you know, being a capitalist and being humans and being who we are, we would always want to take advantage of the situation. Mm -hmm. Just maybe the airlines are thinking this is also another opportunity for us to press down our demands, have this happen. But would, uh, whose detriment would that really be? And uh, I'm just saying <laughs> it's also so, another so, uh, that's a big take. That's a big maybe. You know, but but not they, necessarily. Yeah, I mean, it might not be a big maybe. I'm just yeah. saying that you know that's a possibility. That, 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 yes, that's okay. But it's also a window for you to press on your demand. What are we talking about? These people in business, they need to make profit. But it's it's such a difficult time to be a Nigerian and own a business. It's yeah, such a difficult it, it, it time. Is, it is. It's not easy um, with the cost of diesel going up and you know companies not having electricity, so they have to keep their gens running all through. Uh, these are not the best of times. Uh, maybe Mr. President will be back soon mm. to run the country that's the much we can take right here the trading segment on the breakfast plus tv africa will return with more of course we look at the uh, stories of the front page of national dailies in after press we will return they stay with us